Elsa Alaras, 80 years old, known as Mama Masing to all. She passed away Tuesday, August 17, 2021 at 5 in the afternoon in the hospital. It was August 8 when her youngest daughter, Carla, found her unconscious in her bathroom. She was sent to ER and found out that she suffered from a stroke. Her half right body was paralyzed and was not able to talk. She was in ICU for a few days. After she was transferred to her private room, she was slowly progressing. Mama Masing is a prayer warrior and she truly believed in the power of prayer. I was able to pray for her over FaceTime with her daughter Carla while she was in the hospital. Carla told me one day that uh, when she called the hospital, they gave her a good news that her mom was able to walk and it was a great news for us. Unfortunately, the doctor found out that Mama Masing have bowel obstruction. Due to her age, she is not a candidate for surgery. Pneumonia, she overcame it and there was a possibility that she can recover from her stroke but one of her colon has a problem. While she was in hospital, her youngest sister, niece, flew from Los Angeles and her eldest son, Cyril, and grandkid came from Atlanta to be at her side. Mama Masing was born in the Philippines December 21, 1940. She graduated in college with a degree of Bachelor of Science in Education from the Far Eastern University in Manila. She was a widow for over 22 years. She raised her five beautiful children who are all professionals, two boys, Cyril, Maki, and three girls, Blaze, Tetchy, and Carla, whom she raised by herself, all of whom provided the greatest source of pride and joy to her. Mama Masing was survived by her four siblings, Ave, Purisima, Corazon, and Esther. Though they are apart, they always find time to spend quality time together. The love and bond they shared was apparent to all who knew them. She enjoyed her children, her grandchildren, her fellow believers and friends. She is a very quiet, shy, decent woman, godly, a prayer warrior, a beautiful soul, in and out, and a very kind mother. She is my inspiration and she is my role model. She is also well affectionately be remembered for her kindness, a one-of-a-kind, a hard-working, godly, faithful, and prayerful woman. She will be missed immensely by all her siblings, children, and grandchildren, and all those who have had the pleasure of knowing her. I thank God that uh, his youngest son, Maki, was able to come to America to attend her funeral service last Friday. And unfortunately, her two daughters, Blaze and 
Tetsi were not able to come to America to be with us, I dedicate this video especially for her children and for all her relatives and friends who were not able to see her and to say goodbye to her. God bless us. God bless the Alaras family. I pray that God will give them peace and comfort in this time of sorrow and sadness. It's a great loss for them as well as for me because Mama Masing was one of my best friends that I can always call and share our life together and pray together. We love you Mama Masing and rest in peace. Till we meet again, God bless you all. Thank you. Amen. My name is Saru, and I am Tanaka's first name. Mm -hmm. Running this eulogy for our mother was mm -hmm. one of the hardest things I have ever had to do. But it's very important to us that we say some words to honor our mother. In the Philippines, where we grew up, the Filipino word for mother is inai. salvation of every soul on earth. Amen. Above all, she is a prayer warrior. Yes, it's true. Let me read you a point that my sisters who cannot join us today have written. This is from my sisters Blaze and Tetsu. My fiercest prayer warrior has fallen. Battles in life I am blessed with no words to count. My warrior cannot be defeated. My warrior cannot be denied. She firmly believes the great and mighty creator is on her side. Now she is gone, returning to where she came from. I lost my fiercest prayer warrior with victory on her hands. She is now with her savior. Amen. Basking on his love. She may be fallen, but fallen on the grace of God. Amen. Fallen on the loving arms and tender embrace of the Almighty One. Well done, my warrior. Goodbye is not befitting to a dedicated and the bravest warrior who never surrendered. All our love and all our hearts we give to our fiercest prayer warrior who love us till the end. 
my name is Mari, and I'm the youngest child of all the five. There was a lot of love and sacrifice in my nice life. <laughs> my father passed away when I was only 13 years old, and she was left with the burden of providing food of the ta at the table and keeping us safe. Valiantly, she soldiered on under very difficult circumstances. She walked for miles to save a penny instead of riding public transportation while carrying a heavy load of cooked food to sell at a nearby factory. I live in the Philippines while she lived in New York. We only communicated using Viber. It was difficult but our exchanges were always thoughtful, loving, and sportive. Now that is no longer possible. I have no more in I to call mm -hmm. upon for advice, for help, for encouragement. Mm -hmm. We will always miss her. We will carry her memories in our hearts forever. Amen. Thank you. Amen. What a beautiful way to remember a mom, uh, a mother that was dedicated um, to her family, to her grandchildren, to her children. And uh, you know, I was a witness. I was lucky enough to be a witness to that. So God bless you. We are going to continue singing uh, hymn number 502, Amazing Grace. And if you could join me.
he restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the path, shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Show me goodness and love will follow. Follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Amen. to have a short message, a brief message, just to, to send to you what the Lord has in our hearts, in His heart for us today. But I'm going to be reading 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, and it says, But we do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve, as do the rest who have no hope. But if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will, with him, bring those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not receive those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we will, those who are alive, and remain, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. So when Paul is giving us uh, advice, he knows that we are going to experience loss. Paul mm -hmm. knows that we are going to experience loss, but there's something different about what we, the way we experience loss. And the way Christians really experience loss is with the knowing that we have a hope. A hope that we will see our loved ones again. Mm -hmm. A hope that there is a place for us. A hope that our loved ones' life did not end, but that they went and transitioned before us in the house of the Lord. Now, mourning is natural. I, myself, uh, lost my mom a couple, two years ago, to be exact. And I know that when we were talking your sister's poem about losing your prayer warrior, I completely understand that. Um, but we didn't lose a prayer warrior. We gained an angel. And Amen. I comfort her knowing that the Lord is comfort. It's her comfort. And mourning is natural for us. But let's, let's know that the death of a Christian, the death of a prayer warrior, is a precious sight in the name of the Lord, mm -hmm. in the eyes of God. Now, when it says in the Bible, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his godly ones. The word precious, in the way that it was written in Hebrew, means like a jewel, like something so, so valuable. And right now, we don't have jewels in our hands, but I want you to think about this. God knows the worth of our sister Tomasa. God knows her prayerful life. God knows the faith that she gave her children, the faith and the love that she gave her grandchildren, and not only her family, but those of us who were lucky enough to know her in church. So I want you to think about this, that in the sight of the Lord, the Lord does his work through his people. And our sister Tomasa was not only a warrior, a prayerful warrior, but she was an inspiration. And I am sure just to see when she prayed for her family, she prayed for those around her, wherever she went. So yes, mourning is natural, but we're gonna be mourning with our hope of knowing that we're gonna reunite again. And as and knowing that Jesus also wept when Lazarus died, knowing that Jesus wept when Lazarus died, but even though he wept, he knew that he was gonna come alive. And I want you to think about that, that our rejoicing should be supernatural. Our rejoicing should be in knowing that blessed are the dead who die in the Lord because his spirit says, may we rest. May we rest in the knowing. And this is in the book of Revelation. May we rest in the knowing that their labors and their deeds are not forgotten by the Lord. 
that their neighbors and their deeds are present with him. So we have an important reality that we need to know. The saints had a privilege, as if this one had a privilege of going before us. And I want you to think about this, that while we grieve our loss, we must anticipate with joy the day in which we're going to reunite again. And I want you to, to think about this, that the Bible knows that this is going to be a triumphant reunion. And I am going to encourage you that when you're feeling decided, when you're feeling like you want to hear the words of your mom, I want you to go to the book of Revelations and I want you to read about that joyful and triumphant reunion because it is coming. And I am going to tell you that there will be moments of hardness, especially for um, Matthew. I heard him say that you know, he no longer has somebody to call. And I am going to tell you that it's hard when you have good news and you know your mother would have appreciated those good news. But I want you to know that you can tell the Lord your good news. You can tell the Lord the good news. I know that when we have the hope, when we have the certainty that our loved one is there, it's there in the Lord, it's going to be with us, we have gained an angel. We have gained an angel, and I want you to think about this, that we will be reunited with our fellow believers whom we have lost, lost and all together be united in Christ. Now, I want us to think about this as my sister Carla read, um, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. The Lord is our shepherd. God is our shepherd. He leads us beside still water. And I know right now we may have in our hearts the sentiments of loss, the sentiments of sadness, but when we trust in that word that he's going to lead us into calm water, that he's going to lead us to pasture, that he's going to lead us where we need to be. Now, I want us to remember as we celebrate, because I want to celebrate uh, my sister Tomasa's life. Amen. As we celebrate her life, I want you to think about the joys that you shared with her. I want you to think about the joys that the Lord gave her, the privilege of raising her family, the privilege of knowing her kids, her grandkids, the privilege of being a rock of her family. We have hope, and the hope is in Christ. And I am encouraging everyone that is listening to us today to believe in the second coming of the Lord, to believe that our loved ones are not gone forever. Amen. To believe that we have, in the resurrection, the true hope of knowing that Christ is guiding each and every one of us to our purpose. I know my sister Tomasa lived a purposeful life. You are a testimony of that. And everyone that is reunited here, everyone that is listening is a testimony of that. That one person can make a huge difference in the lives of those connected to her. And those young ones, the young ones of us that are here, I want you to think about this. That you can live honoring and celebrating the life of our sister Tomasa, doing the same thing she did. Praying, trusting the Lord, submitting yourself to, to his will, submitting yourself to the joy of knowing that those of us who are Christian are not going to be lost. Those of us who are Christian, and those of us who just accept the Lord as our Savior, have this hope. So my sister in the Philippines, your prayer warrior, prayers never go away. Mm -hmm. They don't disappear. Amen. They don't disappear. God is yeah. forever hearing them. Amen. God is timeless. God is forever hearing the voice of our sister Tomasa. God is forever in the presence of Christ, loving you in the same way that your mother loved us. Now, I want us to think about this important reality that yes, there will be difficult times of mourning because we are humans, even Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus cried when he lost his best friend. But I want you to think about this, that a few moments after crying, he just asked Lazarus to come forth and there was joy again. Amen. So I want us to think about this, that if we are going to have a period of mourning, but joy will come again. And we need to take this joy in knowing that the life of our sister was so purposeful. And everyone that is reunited here is the testimony for that. Now, 
we are going to end by saying this, and this is what I, I want you, I want you to think about this, that even though she's gone, even though she's gone, those of us can continue to live her legacy by continuing to pray, by continuing prayer, by continuing reaching out to the people that we know she loves. If she was the matriarch of the family, we need to continue that tradition and just continue unified as a family, continue unified as, as, a, as a group to honor her and to honor the Lord in her. Now I'm gonna ask us to pray, and after we pray, I am going to have uh, young Elijah come in to read a poem. But please join me in prayer, and I am going to ask that if you don't have the Lord in your heart, that you consider, that you consider inviting him in. And this can be a private occurrence, but please consider inviting him in so that you can also have this hope. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Now let's pray together. Dear Lord, you fashioned us while we were yet in our mother's womb. Yes, yes. You provided for us. You have guided us through this journey in life. Now we're faced with the reality of death for our loved one has come to the end of our life. But even through this, we are gonna put our trust in you. Yes, Jesus. Give us comfort in our sorrow, Lord. We present our hearts to you and we surrender everything to you. Help us to focus on you and on the eternity that you offer. We ask you, Lord, to just bring rest to those who are tired, and we thank you, thank you joyfully for the lives that our sisters that allowed to honor you, allowed to honor and celebrate the, the people around her, her family and her friends. We thank you for the privilege of knowing her. We thank you for the privilege of being her child, her grandchild, and being touched by her love. We thank you for the privilege of being her friend. Thank you for her quiet demeanor. Thank you for her strength. We thank you in Jesus' name, amen and amen. I am going to ask um, Elijah, Fabiola, if you want to come in and share with us. Hello. You can shed tears that she is gone, or you can smile because she has lived. You can close your eyes and pray that she will come back or you can open your eyes and see all that she has left. Your heart can be empty because you can see her. You can be full of the love that you share. You can turn your back on tomorrow and live yesterday, or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember her and only that she is gone, or you can cherish her memory and let it move on. You can try and close your mind, be empty and turn your back, or you can do what you want, she will want. Smile, open your eyes, love, and go on. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Beautiful. That was just beautiful. Thank you, Elijah. Yes, we can cherish the memories. Amen. Amen. Can I see this like Yes, definitely. We are going to be singing the song, It Is Well With My Soul, if you would join me. Uh, hymn number 519. 519. It is well with my soul.
We thank you for allowing us to share life together. May you continue to be our strength. May you continue to be our support. May we continue the legacy of our sister Tamata. May we be aware of your presence with us as we transition to know the joy that it is to live and to die in you. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you would, um, would not mind, uh, we're going to be singing together in number 21 to finish. And if you wouldn't mind uh, just standing so we can sing together. And it's how great thou art. Amen.
The Lord bless you and keep you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. The Lord lift up his countenance yes, Lord. upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. And give us peace to all. Amen. 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 God said, put your trust in me so you can discover my unfailing love shining on in the midst of your troubles. When you